Well, um, as you know, I was born and raised in Korea. And growing up as a Korean Christian, one of the things that I appreciate the most is my experience of prayer. Um, and especially uh, Korean Christians are famous for uh, dawn prayer service every day. It starts at 5 a.m. It lasts about an hour. And um, that was one of the emphasis of uh, Korean Christian faith um, practices. So if you go to church, that means you go to early morning service too. So it's kind of expected. So when early morning, uh, it was not just few uh, people. It was almost majority of uh, church people were there to begin their day uh, with the daily prayer and devotions. So um, there was a kind of still a strong emphasis on prayer in Korean life. And one of the prayer that we pray is 통성기도 during this early dawn morning service. And 통성기도 means you speak aloud all together at once. So toward the end of the dawn prayer service, we start praying together this 통성기도 and everyone speak out and cry out to God their prayer. And that intensity and the power that you can feel and experience as you grow up. Um, and it was just, uh, I think it's amazing experience that I really cherish whenever I think about it. So um, every day we experience it. And especially, I still remember when I was um, elementary school, uh, I was at the church early dawn prayer service before I go to school. And especially during Lent and Holy Week, we encourage almost everybody to be part of it as a part of our Lenten journey. So it was, it was quite a good um, memory that I had as a, Christ, a Korean Christian. And it really helped, I believe, the uh, Korean Christian's spiritual formations. And um, most of you, probably know that the, the three largest Methodist church in the world are all in Korea. So there, uh, uh, we have like 30%, but out of those 30% of uh, Christians, uh, three largest Methodists in the world are located in uh, Korea, and one of the largest just church in the world. Maybe this is a little different by now, but um, we used to be the, the top largest church in the world was usually in Korea as well. It was a full gospel church, and the member that I remember was like 500,000 members. So they have like 10 different services during the Sunday with the different locations. And um, my grandma was part of that. And it was quite an experience to be part of that as well. But anyway, um, I was really appreciate my experience, prayer experience throughout uh, my Korean Christianity experience. And when I was in seminary, however, I learned that all those characteristic that was um, that I thought that Korean Christian has as their unique uh, heritage of those emphasis on prayers and pray aloud and every morning meeting, every morning prayer meeting and so forth. All those things, I actually I learned that it's originated from the Christian revival movement in the United States, 19th century. So those people who were revived in those revival movement in the United States, they actually came and became the missionary in Korea, and they taught us to pray like that. So actually, the uniqueness of uh, Korean Christians' faith is actually from our tradition here in the United States. So it was kind of interesting to learn all those things. So, um, well, I'm sharing this not because I'm going to ask you to come to church and join with me 5 o'clock um, daily prayer meeting, but I just want to encourage you uh, to take a little bit of more time, especially during this Lenten season, to have a deeper and richer prayer life each day. I want you to be more intentional to focus on 
developing a conversation with God and growing spiritually as you build a characters um, through your prayers so that you can be more like God each and every day. And when you allow God to work within you through your daily prayers, you will experience his living spirit and his power that will cleanse and restore and remold you and change you to a totally new person at the end. So um, I want to continue to encourage you to spend some time with your prayer during Lent. And especially today, I want to focus on another great character in the Bible who will also teach us how to pray and inspire us our prayer life today. And that person is a King David. King David was also a shepherd, and he was also a prophet, and he was also a poet and musician. And he prayed a lot in his life and about anything and everything. He wrote down many of his prayers and put them into a music form and create the book of Psalms. He wrote most of the book of Psalms, especially 70 of Psalms uh, out of 123 Psalms. Was did, uh, we recognize that was written by uh, David. So that Psalms has been a prayer book of the church for the last 3,000 years. And still, as we sang and read today, um, that really touches us in many ways. So they didn't knew how to pray. And we can learn some lessons from his prayer life. David was a man of God's own heart. It was written in the first Samuel chapter 16, uh, 13 and 14 that God says that David is a man after God's own heart. But should it not be also our desire to please God and let the heart of God filled with joy because of us. So trying to focus on the life, prayer life of David will continue, surely help us to understand some, something that we're supposed to uh, focus on in our prayer life. The first thing that I want to uh, focus on is David, David prays earnestly and constantly each and every day. The word prayer used in 129 times in the Old Testament, but out of 129 times, uh, 64 times, almost a half of time, the word prayer was written in Psalms, was used in Psalms. The first one that I want to focus on was uh, Psalm 50, uh, chapter 5, verse 3. And it says, O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and watch. So in the morning we know what he did. What did he, what did he do? He prayed in the morning, right? And there's another instant when you see the chapter 55 of Psalm, verse 17, uh, you will say that... Um, David says, every evening and morning, and at noon, I utter my complaint and mourn, and he will hear my voice. So actually, not only the morning, but evening and even at noon, he set a time to continue to pray and have a meeting with God. And another one is also, I didn't uh, put it on the slide, but um, some... 59 verse 16, he also says, I will sing of my, uh, your might. I will sing aloud your steadfast love in the morning. So again, we can, you can hear the repeatedly what he did in the morning. So he has uh, this habit of prayer in the morning. You know, remember that David is a king. And he's an accomplished warrior. He is the ruler of Israel, and his wealth, his wealth is beyond measure. In the presence of men, David is certainly a somebody. 
If David was alive in our day, if he were to visit maybe big city Chicago or even here, he's the kind of person that all of us will try to close our streets and our uh, businesses so that he can go through easily our town. So he has such an influential and powerful people in that area. He was a kind of person that would attract millions of people when he trying to speak, you know. But he has this habit to start his day with prayer by humbling himself before God and crying out to God every morning. This habitual, earnest, and constant prayer helps David to de develop the very important attitude as a Christian, humility, humbleness. For king, he has every reason not to seek God in the morning and in the evening. I believe that David had tons of very important phone calls to answer and urgent emails that he had to respond each and every day, not along with his family matters. Remember, he has seven older brothers and at least two uh, sisters, eight wives, and 18 children. As a successful king, David could surely declare, look at me, I am the mighty king of Israel. I have defeated all my enemies and I will continue to defeat all of my enemies, and my throne will endure forever. He has every right to say that. But David did not do this. Rather, he then boasted, and instead of calling all the press conference of what he had done, David retreats to his own chamber and prays to God every day. Every day when I pray, I hope that I can be like David. Instead of seeking my own position and power of influence or prestige, I hope to seek the time and place to glorify God in my life. Instead of starting my own day with checking my busy schedules and plans, I hope and want and I intend to empty myself in prayer to pursue God's will in my daily life. So that's the first lesson that we can learn from David. The second thing that we can learn from his prayer life is that he holds God's grace and God's attributes in his prayer so much. Uh, on that, uh, that's the secret of God's constant and energized prayer life in the manner which he pray each and every day. There's a something compelling about the way God ordered and arranged his prayer time that draw him back again and again with the presence of God. That, couple, that also helps him to enjoy God's presence and that is some kind of order in his prayer. He has a certain way of doing his prayers. The first, he always call upon God's, that he initiate by calling God's name. Well, naming God reveals your relationship with God. How would you call your God? Some may feel a call your God with Father, or some may feel as a shepherd. Well, there is a different uh, way of your naming God, but it really helps you to develop a closer relationship with God. And when you see and look at the Psalms, there are so many different imagery of God. One of the meditation books that I'm using for the, uh, during Lent that um, Sue Smith recommend, um, it the very first, uh, every day when we pray, it suggests that just name God and just stop there and be commune with God for about 20 minutes before I jump into any other prayers. Just name God and be with God for 20 minutes. Well, at first I thought that it's kind of a waste of time, you know. 
Wow, you just spent 20 minutes with just naming God over and over. However, as I continue to practice it by choosing different words to name God each day, I think I could uh, widen my vocabulary and my perspective of God and develop a little wider and deeper way of connecting God. So I really encourage you to think about it, just to name God when you pray in a, with a different uh, words. And then uh, after naming God, he always start his prayer, the David, with uh, sharing his own situation to God. David prayed to God not only when he was in trouble, but also when everything was great and everything was um, doing very, very well, and also every other uh, situation in between, too. He made a joyful noise to God sometimes, and sometimes he cried out for help. And sometimes he mourned for his own pain and loss of his life. And sometimes he just poured out anger and shame to God. Those are the real life situation of David. Those are the real law, intense emotions of David. He doesn't hide it. Instead, he genuinely described all his situation to God each and every day. And that's the second point of his prayers. And then the third thing, he didn't stop there. We usually stop our and end our prayer right there, you know, after you just complain everything or pour out all your angers and everything and you just stop it. But he also goes to the next step, which is he trying to focus on God, thinking about God. He never failed to focus on God and his attribute in the midst of his own struggles and troubles or his uh, outburst joy. I believe this is the power of prayer. As we connect to God through our prayers, God's spirit empowers to remember who he is. He is able to cleanse our mis mistake, heals our own break brokenness and refresh our minds and forgive our sin. God's grace and love becomes real and full in our life through our prayers. And then third, with that mind, from his situation, he think about God, and then he trying to look at his own situation from God's perspective as, again, you had totally have different attitude once you focus on God and his power and his glory and love. Instead of fear, he can have courage to face his own daily challenges. Instead of despair, and, um, in despair, he could find hope in the midst of it. Instead of death, he could find life. And that is the power of his, David's prayer. And his um, prayer always um, ends with all kinds of praise and thanksgiving to God because of it. So I want you to remember this order that um, David prayed in his life, naming God and just honestly, truly share his own or your own life situation, and then Focus on the attributes of God in the midst of it, and then trying to face your daily situation with that God perspectives and give thanks to God in the midst of all that. So that's the second attribute that I want to encourage you to um, remember in your prayers. And then the third attribute is um, David prays a very authentic prayers. Well, we all know very well that David made a big mistake. David's greatest sin when he took Bathsheba and made her husband be killed during the war. You know, this is not just an accidental thing that just happened in his life. It took time and it, a series of choices that David made intentionally to do the wrong things. He saw Bathsheba's 
a, taking a bath, and that was one thing. And then the next day he go, and next day he gets, you know, he trying to get uh, to curb back. It, you know, it, it takes time. It was a series of choices that he made. So, despite of all these great sin of God, David's life, what enables him to be restored as a man after God's own heart? I think that was my big question. Well, he made great mistakes intentionally, you know, but still we remember him one of the best person. And God also said that he's God's own uh, after God's own heart. What made him the greatest person in the Bible? Well, I think the answer is uh, from what we just read today, uh, Psalm chapter 51, verse 10 to 12. This prayer of David is after he recognized his sin. This prayer illustrates the nature of true sorrow of sin. Again, he was the king. He did have every right to use his power to ignore his moral obligation or altered his ethical duties. However, he chose to return to God. He admit his mistake and humbly stood before God and seek God's forgiveness. His repentance was sincere and deep. There was no effort to palliate his guilt, no desire to escape the judgment that threatens him. In, that was all inspired in these prayers. David saw the enormity of his transgression. He saw the defilement of his soul. He detested his own sin, and it was not for pardon only that he prayed, but the purity of his own heart. He longed to have the enjoyment, to have the relationship with God, and he asked to restore that to God in his prayers. Though David's fall has been great, his repentance was deep and real. He had been forgiven much, therefore he loved much as well. King David achieved and triumphed in God, and yet he dwelt much upon his own unworthiness and sinfulness. His conscience was not dead. He cries that my sin is ever before me. He has a very sensitive heart. He never flatters himself that sin has no matter with him and nothing to do with him. As he recognized and realized the depth of deceit in his heart, he was deeply di uh, disappointed with himself and prayed that God would keep him back by his power and cleanse him from his old sins. He felt that he could endure the loss of his crown, but he could not uh, live without the presence of God in his life. I think that heart, the authentic, genuine, and real desire to reach out to God and have the right relationship with God is the center of his prayer and his life, uh, prayer life as well. Have you ever fallen into sin? I think Lent is a time for us to pray intentionally to focus on our own sin and sinful nature and pray like uh, David. God does not design us to live under a perpetual cloud of shame and guilt, nor the selfish sorrow and repenting which will remove a single sin, of a single uh, stain of our sin. Through the death of Jesus on the cross, we have the way to make it right with God. And that is what the David chose to be. And he prayed each and every morning, day. So I hope um, during this time of, of Lent, may your humble and authentic prayer will help you to remember God's grace and love 
that cleans you and heals you and restores you each and every day so that you can be more like God each and every day as well. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for your blessing each one of our life and your love that you poured out, willing to sacrifice your own son for us to show the way for us to come back to you. We recognize our sinful nature, our mistakes, and our way of ignoring your invitation. Help us to be more sensitive, just like David did. And help us to focus on you and your relationship. Cleanse all our iniquity and create us a right and new spirit within you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.